Now that we've covered the basics, let's actually start modeling. So when you apply symmetry, by default it goes from right to left. What do you do if you want it to be applied to the other side from left to right? Well, what I would do in this case, right now I only have geometry on the right and when I apply symmetry it's on the left. So what I will do is apply it a poly on top and delete the right side. And now I'll apply a symmetry and you can see it disappears because by default it's still going from right to left and since there's nothing on the right it just gives us this. So all I have to do is click on flip. As for the threshold here, if you're working with a very small object you may want to decrease the threshold. In this case this is a pretty large object so we can just keep it at 0.1. And I'll just collapse it and turn off the cage and apply open subdiv. Alright, so let's begin. Front viewport. I'll just move this down a little bit. Now basically what we need to do here is establish the curvature here. We do have a curve here. So I'll just move this up here and I will insert one more loop through here and move this down. So I use Alt S for swift loop. When I press Alt S, I can insert a loop right here. I can then click and hold Control Alt and then click and drag to even out the loop. So notice how it changes when I move it from the center to the closer to the edge. How it adapts to the angle. So up here we have a straight line, down here we have a curve, and then when I press and hold Control Alt and click, it adapts and kind of evens out according to where it is. You can also hold Alt and click and drag as well, but it will not really adapt to the edge. So now that I've done that in this viewport, I'll also move this a little bit to the left here, matching this curve. Now let's go to the left viewport. As you can see, I have to move it forward a little bit. So you can work with multiple viewports at one time. So notice how when I move this right on the left viewport, the front viewport does not change. You can see the perspective viewport changes, but it doesn't change on the front viewport, and that's because we're looking at directly at the front. So there will be no change because we're moving this only in one axis, the y-axis. So I'll pretty much move all this. You can see right now it's a little bit hard to see where exactly this is because it's completely flat at this point. At this point this is not really a 3D object in the left viewport. So all we have to do is select this. See this is another example where if you have the move rotator scale tool selected and you just try and select an object here you might actually move it. So it's a good idea to press Q first and then select what you need to select. So I'll move this a little bit here, deselect this, and move this a little bit further. Alright, now I need to insert a loop through here. And just do a little bit of adjustments. here I am pressing spacebar because once you apply symmetry and subdivision you will see that we have a curve happening here and we need to match it we need to use that curve to match the reference image So I want to move this a little bit forward to match as well. Remember that the two, the front, the concept art will not match perfectly. We can try moving this as much as we want, but it will never completely match. Because of course when the artist is drawing, it's not perfect, it's not a perfect match. There are a lot of differences between these two. 
so all we can do is do our best and try and match it and don't be afraid to make changes because sometimes an object that works in two-dimensional space won't work in three-dimensional space so it's kind of your job to make it work somehow and adapt it to a three-dimensional space all right and after that I will hold shift and move so here we are extruding an edge by holding down shift and then simply moving. Here what I would do is select this vertex and activate edge constraints and I've got that set to shift V. So once again if you want to set the shortcut customize customize user interface. So what, what do we need to search for? Well we can search for two things. Number one is edge constraint so ED and see what we can find here. As you can see, here we go, Shift V, Edge Constraint Toggle. We can also try searching for CO for Constraint to Edge. And as you can see, Constraints Edge is here, but that's not the one I'm using. So you can actually search for two things, and this is actually a different function right here. But once I've got that on, Shift V, I can now move this vertex according to the edge. So as you can see it's not going off the edge. And I can use this to just kind of move this down right here. And now I'll go to the front viewport and move it. As you can see I forgot to turn off edge constraints. So when I'm trying to move this to the left it's not going there. And you can see where it's moving in the perspective viewport. So sometimes you can forget to turn something off and you wonder why it's not working. So just kind of keep in mind what you've got on and what you've got off. On the top left here we have a keyboard shortcut override toggle. Now by default this is on, but if it's on your shortcuts won't work so make sure this is off. And I'll press shift V to turn off edge constraints and move this right here. and we will need to insert one more loop through here. So I can use Alt S, Swift Loop. What I can also do is select this and press Shift R to ring. So I've got ring set to Shift R, and then I've got Shift C set to connect edges. And here I can quickly insert number of segments here. The pinch value is how far they are apart. So this is pinch. The slide value simply slides them in this direction or that. So in this case I'll just have one. Now I have set flow set to control shift s. So when I press control shift s what it's going to do is it's going to take your selection and try and match it to the outside the surrounding geometry. And with this I can move this down. I can press space and I can once again just edge constraints and just kind of refine. Now I'll select this, hold shift and move it here. You can switch from vertex edge border polygon element mode by pressing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. To switch back to edible poly mode simply press the same number again. So if you press 5 to go to Element, simply press 5 again to go to Edible Poly. If you press 2 to go to Edge Mode, simply press 2 again and you'll be back at Edible Poly Mode. So I've got this right here. And now it's time to fill out the top. So I will select this, hold Shift and extrude up. Next we have the Planar Tools. We have Make Planar. What this will do is take kind of the average location of all your selections and try and flatten it out. In this case it's not really doing a good job, it's mostly for polygons. But we have planar X, which will take your object and make it planar on the X axis. So you can see it's flat on the X axis left and right. Planar Y will make it planar on the Y axis. However, in this case, you notice that it should be going flat like this, but it's not. This is because I created the plane in the front viewport, which kind of messes up your pivot. 
So what I will do is select the symmetry modifier, hold control and click on the su open subdivision modifier, right click and cut them. And I will go here on the right to utilities, reset X form, reset selected. After that I will edit poly, right click and collapse to. Now you notice if I click here on make plane on the y-axis now it's doing the correct behavior and now it's flat on the y-axis front and back and if I press on this one it'll make a plane on the z-axis up and down now I've got x, y, and z set to shift x for the x-axis shift y for the y-axis and shift z for the z-axis so now I'll move this up here and I can select all of these and make it planar. Shift Z. All right. To use target weld, I use Shift W. So target weld is activated, and now I can weld them together. Because when I extrude these upwards, we had a gap here, and we need to weld them together. and now I need to go to the front viewport and match them up right here alright so now what I want to do is make this vertex go in between the top and bottom vertices and there are several ways to do this I can use a script called straighten edge which I've got set to shift alt s so once I activate it I can now snap between two points and you can see it's aligned right there now I've got a video on where you can find the script and how you can install it but if you don't want to use a script you can also do in this case it's simple is you can press shift V or I can press shift V to turn on edge constraints move this up and now move it down and now it's between these two vertices so I will also adjust this vertex here shift V and move this as well so just kind of adjusting and remember those modifiers I copied or I cut I can right click and paste them back so you can quickly copy we can copy it which would make a copy that we can then paste on other objects we can cut it which means we can only paste it back one more time and we can paste it and paste instanced so here is our helmet object now since I'm using open subdiv, notice how on the helmet here, a little bit of sharpness here. I can add this simply by selecting the appropriate edges, which would be these edges right here, and turning off the cage. And now notice how here under edit edges we have weight edge properties, weight and crease. So notice what happens when I move the crease value. I'm going to click here and then move my mouse up. So notice how it gets sharper. I will turn off Iceland display so we can see exactly what's going on. Right click here. So as I increase the crease value here, it gets sharper. So I can use this to get the exact sharpness that I want. But I like to use Iceland Display because it really kind of simplifies things. And there's not a bunch of lines blocking your view, which can make it, in this case, can make it hard to see your concept art. But Iceland Display makes it a lot cleaner. In this case, you can also see that we have a curve that doesn't quite match the concept art. And what I can do is select these two edges and simply increase the value here, the crease value. Let me turn off symmetry for now. Now, if you hold Alt and then left click in the left, front, or top viewport, the viewport will become orthographic right here. And it'll kind of look a little bit strange. So here I want to press L may go back to being a left viewport. So notice how right now it says left, but if and now I can hold the 
middle mouse button and pan around. But if I actually press Alt and then click the middle mouse button, it will turn into an orthographic viewport. And you can simply click here and select left, or you can simply press L on your keyboard. If I press T on my keyboard, this will turn into a top viewport. Now, in order to zoom in on your object, you can select it and press Z. And that's known as a zoom extents. You can zoom in on sub-objects. In this case, if I press Z with these two edges selected, it will zoom in on them. If I press 2 to get out of edge mode, I now have the object selected. If I press Z, I will zoom in on the object. If I deselect everything by clicking an empty area or pressing Control D and then press Z, it will zoom in on all visible objects. And you can select this object, press Z, select this, press Z. And here on the bottom right, I've got this top one, this top little box set to zoom extend selected. And right here on the bottom, I've got that set to orbit. So you may want to change this if you're having difficulty maneuvering around your scene. So I'll press L to switch this back to a left viewport and with these edges selected I will increase the crease value and notice how it matches the reference image a lot better now. So there we are. Now that I've got the visor, I need to start working on the kind of surrounding part. So what I will do is switch to border mode, select this. Now you can switch from border mode directly into edge mode, and these edges will still be selected. Then I will hold down Alt and deselect the center edges. So y if you hold Control, you will add to your selection. If you hold Alt, you will subtract from it. Now I have a separate video on how to use this script called Extend Borders and I've got that set to Shift-Alt-E. So when I press that, it will activate this script right here. We can increase the extension depth and the angle. So in this case I'll set the angle to 90 degrees and it will be extruded in this direction. And I can maybe decrease this a little bit, maybe to like 2 and then press OK. I can activate the script again And now I can change the angle to negative 90 to extrude in this direction. Like so, and OK. Let me move this down a little bit. 